Um, it's a pandemic over here, so I got dressed for the occasion. There's nothing else to do, you know. So um, here we are. Um, I do believe, I hope that you can see my screen. Is that right? No. Uh, try that. Um, okay. I believe maybe now. Yes. Excellent. Hello, good evening, everybody. So this is a brand new um, project, really. Uh, some of you may have seen my announcement of 0 0.3 on the SQLite forum today. Um, and a quite unusual aspect to this, perhaps, is that it's a database project. It's related to SQLite internals. And I really don't know an awful lot about SQLite internals. So. I am very, very much expecting there to be Q and A's where uh, the A's may be coming from the Q's, if you like. So do feel free. So um, you may have recalled some time ago in 2013 or so, uh, Howard Chu of the Open LDAP project did a prototype port of SQLite to uh, he is LMDB key value store. Um, and that was quite exciting for a little bit. Um, there were some interesting sorts of numbers, um, but it just never really took off. Um, but that's what's kind of inspired the journey that we're on with Lumo SQL. Um, so what we're trying to do uh, is recognize that SQLite uh, is pretty much sui generis. That is absolutely one of a kind. Um, I think it's uncontested that uh, it's probably the most deployed serious application, uh, which means that if you fiddle too much, then um, somebody notices. Um, I, I'm quite sure Mr. Hip could put this better. So, um, <clears throat> There are some things if you if you want to play around with what might an alternative SQLite universe look like, um, you really need to do it somewhere else. So we're going to see what works in uh, the area uh, start initially of backends, uh, and then see if we can get a working API that may or may not be suitable for mainstream SQLite. Uh, unfortunately. Um, it's not as easy as start a branch and play a bit because with something of this scale, it has to be tried out um, at a significant percentage of the use cases. Otherwise, you can't even consider it. Hi, Dan. And then there's benchmarking. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, there's a square that's blocking some of the text on the presentation. I don't know if we can move that or if it's... How about that? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay, the chat window's gone away. Uh, okay, window managers, don't you love them? So, um, <clears throat> what we've got so far, we've got three backends to uh, SQLite that have been spliced in in a, a way I'm gonna show you shortly. We've got a bit of benchmarking infrastructure, which is quite surprising to me, but it doesn't really exist uh, that I know of. And if the assembled people do know something, please let me know. Uh, but we've got some infrastructure there that will let us compare versions of SQLite with itself and um, modified versions. Uh, we've got a way of doing this code splicing, and we'll talk just a little about that. Um, and an awful lot of think before your code, um, which is doing things like running around the net, looking at what other work's been done like this, uh, contacting people who are into performance analysis of database internals and so on and so forth. Um, once again, with reference that this is an extraordinary project uh, in its scale and scope. So one approaches carefully. So let's just have a look because my CPU fan has gone quiet, which I think means uh, the compile's done. 
let's have a look. Um, hmm. Well, uh, can you see a terminal? Yes. Excellent. So, uh, huh, hasn't quite finished. Never mind. So, what we have right now is um, that. So, this is a make file that uh, is going to build as a base um, the character, the tip. Um, and we're going to use this back end and we're going to use this back end um, as well as the default uh, B tree. Um, and there's particular versions of the back end. Um, that's the different versions for LMDB. And this is the version of LMDB that we're going to compile it with. So you can see we're building up a little bit of a matrix here. Um, and I am aware that LMDB now goes up to 1.0, release candidate one, um, and that 3.8 was quite some time ago. However, we've just been getting the plumbing right. Um, and looking at the work we've got to do to take this up to 333, uh, we're confident that we've got a sustainable way of doing this. Um, BDB, which I'm not advocating as the key value store of choice, uh, this is, in fact, the Sleepy Cat one, the Oracle bought that they kept as open source by um, making it into a GPL bomb, as you may recall. Uh, but interestingly, they did a porting job. Um, and I think BDP, ah, BDB is relevant because it's the classic key value store API. Um, not just LMDB is fashioned after it, but plenty of others. Uh, and indeed, as we may discuss a little later on, uh, there is one live and kicking modern BDB port uh, that doesn't come from Oracle. So the latest that Oracle did was 3.18.2, uh, and then they abandoned it. So we thought we'd pick this up. Um, and the somewhat palindromic uh, BDB version for that is 18.132. Uh, it gives us something to uh, compare against apples for apples. So that, that's why we've got this matrix here. Um, we've certainly tried with other numbers and um, we're confident we can finish this off. Okay, so uh, you do that and you get a build directory with all the obvious sorts of things. Um, and then you go um, make a benchmark. Um, and then if you want, you can go uh, targets equals. Um, and then we have something like uh, something like that. Um, we're not going to do that because I've mostly already done it. And the design for the benchmarking is it's all sitting here in um, a uh, 333.0 uh, database. And so we go, uh, oh, we have to first of all find our working um, SQLite uh, 3.33.0 SQLite, SQL. Yep, there we go. Uh, and so if I go tool supplier with SQLite because we do have plenty of them to go around. Um, and then the, the that um, did I uh, yes. Sorry about that. Okay. Benchmark summary. <laughs> And I've managed to screw my terminal. I think that's right. Yes. So inside that SQLite database, we have a, a SHA-256, which is a run ID, um, and then a target, uh, a date, and how long. Um, 
it took to execute a bunch of tests. Um, we can then specify one of these um, IDs uh, and compare it with, I don't know, let's say this one here, and it will give us um, actually with the giant font I have, it will give us in column one that we're comparing um, tip SQL light with uh, old SQL light with LMDB. And we've got some um, column one and column two, and we can see that even an old SQL light with LMDB is uh, on some measures doing better than uh, tip SQL light. So there's much more to do, but you can see we've got this infrastructure. Okay, so um, were there any questions? Because I'm not really watching the the magic Q and A thing. Um, okay, I'm sure the organizers will let me know. Um, There's no questions yet. Okay. Well, if you'll excuse me, I will quickly try and find the other bit of Zoom. Um, so I think I can make this work. Slideshow. Yes. Can you see that still? Yes. Good. So um, how do we do this? And so I didn't want to fork SQLite. That's been done many, many times. Um, and I'm having a little bit of a bugbear about Git and GitHub because it has lowered the price of forking uh, so much that, um, well, they proudly say they've got 78 million repos in GitHub, GitHub which um, is, I don't think, anything to brag about. Um, some reasonable percentage of those are SQLite forks in one way or another. So we tried to find out, uh, tried to think of something that was not forking. And so we've written a little tool and uh, you can see it um, on the website, it's clearly linked, that is kind of a hybrid between um, patching and uh, fossil merging or Git merging. Um, where both of those tend to break down. So if you have a chunk of code and a modification that's required to, to bump up a version and then another chunk of code, and that is a mismatch with another essential patch, normally a human's involved. It turns out with um, a bit of uh, said, uh, equivalent to said, um, we can actually do that in an automated fashion. So the not forking tool uh, is what's enabled to give us that um, make file matrix you see so far and quite a few others that are coming along. Um, whether others can use it or not, I don't know. Um, but let's see. So huh, that's a band. Um, that's another band. Anyway, if we keep going like this, uh, we can pretty much see our way clear with enough developer hours uh, to pretty soon get to LMDB 1.0 uh, with current SQLite. Now that's pretty interesting because LMDB 1.0 comes with uh, not only um, some uh, performance and, um, and perhaps um, other sort of classical improvements, it also comes with page level encryption. What that looks like, I don't know. Um, it has some um, infelicities uh, as well, uh, things that I think we need to address. Uh, but by and large, I think that's going to give a very different performance profile with uh, SQLite benchmarking. Um, I think we're gonna bring, bring old and clunky um, Oracle BDB up to SQLite tip. Um, which has the benefits that I talked about earlier on um, because of the API simply. Uh, another BDB, now, um, if you go poking around on GitHub, you'll see 
there is a very actively maintained database called ComDB. Um, actually, Richard introduced me to these guys. Uh, they are um, the, P the database team at Bloomberg, and they have maintained a fork of SQLite and BDB since um, the Sleepy Cat days. And as far as I can tell so far, they're still using the BDB interface, uh, but they've got a much more functional uh, BDB underneath. So that's going to be quite cool to look at. The guys are keen. Um, there may even be some on this call, I don't know. Um, so that's quite exciting. If we can, we can get to grips with that, maybe um, there is a BDB that is worth considering. The reason that we would like that um, even if it is not as performant or whatever, is because different key value stores interpret uh, things such as um, MVCC uh, and concurrency in different ways. Uh, there isn't just one way of doing this. Um, we have the traditional way uh, that uh, SQLite has, has gone with the internal B tree. Um, and does so well and has been so good for so long. But what's the alternative? And the answer is, we don't really know yet. So we're looking at collecting a lot more information in each benchmark run. Uh, in fact, um, Carl, I believe, is on this call and we're using his, um, uh, his tickle extension, which gives us access to a lot of system information. So we'll be um, including uh, portable system stats uh, in the benchmarking. Um, now, what we've done with the benchmarking is try and make it so that there's a, a way of having a fairly persistent database that other people can contribute to. So you do your benchmarking, I do my benchmarking, and then with a single command, we can just pop the two um, in the same database and um, run some global statistics and cleverness on it. Um, all runs have got a, a SHA-256 key, so hopefully we don't have any clashes. And what we're hoping is that fairly soon we'll get a picture of what do these different uh, builds in the build matrix do under different real life scenarios. Now. At the moment, we've just got mostly uh, Linux uh, or slash Unix. Um, we'd like to add one in the next round. So we've already got a pretty large set of dimensions for the benchmarking. Clearly, we have to add uh, several more platforms in the end, um, particularly uh, Android and iOS, uh, just by the numbers. Um, but right now, if you could add one more significant platform, that would give us that extra dimension. So looking ahead over the next few months, that's the, the kind of list we've got. Um, but if you look at the things that not only do we don't know, and certainly I don't, as someone who doesn't know an awful lot of, uh, about databases, oddly enough, um, but there are some things that nobody seems to know. Um, so if we're talking about a monster database in terms of, uh, uh, of deployment, you might compare it to some of the next most common, um, whether that's uh, MySQL or MariaDB. Um, they have the concept of pluggable database back, uh, backends, rather pluggable um, backend engines. That's true. But none of those pluggable engines are really first class citizens. Um, they're special cases, uh, they're column stores or document stores or something very special and narrow. But in terms of a general replacement for their uh, InnoDB um, core storage, no. And so that is one thing that no one's really tried to do so far. Um, we're going to try a few other things. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, Richard has implemented row level checksums uh, in a virtual file system. Um, we would like to try and put that in the core. And um, I don't think any mainstream database has done that so far. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, 
if LMDB 1.0 lives up to what we think is true, um, we may well be able to have at rest encryption um, fairly much out of the box without us doing very much work. That would be kind of cool. Um, I am aware, of course, that uh, there are numerous encryption options for SQLite. I'm not trying to say any of them aren't any good. Uh, but um, it would be really nice to have a consolidated code base where it's just there if you want it with an option to make file. Um, and the kind of scary thing is nobody knows very much about doing this at enormous scale except for the SQLite team. Um, who else does system software at this scale? And we can go and talk about the uh, Linux kernel, but in application level, who does it? And the answer is not many people. So there's a lot of unknowns here. And I am just astonished um, that benchmarking on any set of SQLite databases doesn't appear to be done in a general way. Now, we have the TCP mark tests, um, which kind of ironically use SQLite in their implementation, but they do not target SQLite, um, presumably because they get sniffy about not being a networked database. Um, but in any case, that's all very ad hoc. You get your TCP mark and compile it how you like and get the results and then they argue about it online. But there doesn't seem to be any way of saying, well, here's a bit of a standardized way of saying how you got your um, benchmark results using, um, what's it called, DD Hammer. Uh, that's right, it's a SQLite based tool. Um, so that we can compare apples and apples. So what we're trying to do starting very, very simply, is to do apples and apples between um, SQLites. So mostly, that's the high level overview. Um, if you are on the SQLite forum, you'll have been aware that I've been trying to figure out all kinds of things about how uh, Pager C and B tree C work. Um, I have done some reorganization of the uh, B tree H that kind of puts the functions in categories and I think I can make a bit more sense of it now. And of course, the key of it all is uh, the VDBE, the virtual machine execution engine. That's the level where the API needs to be. Um, I don't know where to start with uh, the, the discussion, but that's the sort of the 10,000 meter level. Um, any questions? Yes, there's some in the Q&A. If you want to stop sharing your screen, you'll be able to see the uh, little uh, Q&A box. Oh. And then we have several, actually. OK. Uh, have I compared ComDB2? Um, yes. So I was speaking to these guys this afternoon. Um, they have got a SQLite front end. Their alternative back end is what I was referring to. It's actually a fork of uh, BDB done back when Oracle bought Sleepy Cat. So um, they took that on. They added all kinds of interesting things, uh, including um, row level locking and goodness knows what. Um, these guys are very keen to chat as to what would be involved in putting their SQLite back in, in uh, alongside the others we've got. So the answer is yes. Have we tried it? No. Um, are we going to engage? Absolutely, as fast as we can. Um, we have limited resources. Plug, plug, plug. There are two things we would like. Number one is um, keen developers or documenters. The documentation and code are separate projects. Uh, and number two, a wide variety of the above. That is to say, um, if you're the kind of person that doesn't normally uh, contribute to um, projects in a standard way or never really tried it before, um, I've never contributed to a um, database project like this either. So come on over. Um, so, I, Tom, has that answered your question? No, 
All right. I think that was Tom, was it not? Um, how does LDAP fit into this? Right. Okay. So only because LDAP was a consumer of the BDB key value store and it wasn't suitable for them. And so they wrote another one. Um, they didn't start from scratch. Uh, I can't remember the name of the gentleman from Germany, I think, that Howard built his code on. Um, and that was about 2010-ish. Um, and they built LMDB. So underneath Open LDAP is a key value store called LMDB. Now, when Oracle changed the license of the Berkeley database, BDB, uh, to, to something a lot of people didn't like, um, many, many open source uh, packages had to find an alternative and they went and adopted LMDB. So if you go and look at a Unix or Linux distribution and a lot of Windows software too, you'll find if they wanted a key value store, um, they went and moved to LMDB. So it, it, open LDAP is, is in that simply because that's where this very common key value store comes from. Um, I should point out that surely by definition, the most widely used key value store would have to be SQLite's B-Tree. It's just that we don't have a standardized API to it. Uh, but after that, it's probably LMDB. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, Alejandro, do we have some um, comparisons to Tokyo Cabinet? No, we don't. Um, uh, there are two questions about that. The first is, what does the API look like? And if it's vaguely like btree.c um, uh, or BDB and so forth, then, um, then we can do that quite easily. Uh, please, please um, come over and see us at sqlite.org or chat with me. Uh, and we'll have a go with that because certainly plenty of people have spoken about it. Um, if there aren't any more uh, questions just this moment, um, I will take the opportunity to um, preempt. So uh, if I just argue with my window manager a little. Um, Okay, one moment. Uh, so one of the things that we spent quite some time doing was um, pulling together a little bit of a, um, what we grandiosely call a knowledge base. Um, so if I just get the fossil prettified uh, doc trunk, okay, um, doc trunk, doc catches me every time. Uh, there we go. Here's a URL. Oh, can I post a URL? Oh, I have to do that in the chat, not Q and A, right? Yes, you can mm -hmm. do it in the Q uh, chat. Yep. Here we go. Um, that there should answer did did that i didn't see it but i think i pasted something um yes there we go uh okay there are two copies of a url um that may preempt quite a lot of have you looked at this have you looked at that uh, the answer is we looked at a lot of stuff um including um in thank you carl Oh, Ooh, yes. Thank you, Carl, uh, schooling me on uh, um, how to use. Um, so this will save, hopefully, saying, have we looked at different things? You'll find reference to some papers there. Like, for example, quite an interesting meta uh, study looking at um, half a dozen different other papers on benchmarking uh, SQLite 
um, and they found that if you change just one parameter, some of the benchmarking numbers will change by 70% um, um, or something. So there has been a lot of thought put into uh, the area of SQL Lite. It's just that it hasn't been brought together much. Uh, so we're just trying to see what might it take to poke various experts into pooling their SQLite knowledge rather than having it scattered all over GitHub and other places. I don't know what the answer to that is, but we're trying. Um, and the other thing that may be of some uh, interest here uh, is um, the not forking tool, which is hopefully going to come to you all right now, that um, completely different in style and substance to everything else on the LumisQL.org site. Uh, but um, to be honest, if it takes off a bit, it could be, uh, for example, that uh, Linux package maintainers might find something of this nature to be useful. Um, I don't know. But um, there you go, I put it out for your consideration. Um, Mr. Hip, do you have any comments? Because this is treading all over your little patch. Let me make him, there we go. One second, let me grant. Um, okay, it, Mr. Hip seems to be struck dumb. Ah, Dr. no, he's not struck. Um, there he is. If you'd like to uh, chime in, um, I uh, granted you some access. It, had, it took me just a second to move you around, but you should be able to comment. Okay. So Richard says he got logged out and he's just logged back in again. Um, quite clearly. Uh, ah, there testing, we testing. There we go. All right. There we go. Very good. Uh, I guess I need to turn the light on too. Can you probably see me? But um, I just need to get all the right, right control set up for volume and so forth. Now, um, oh, yeah. Now, uh, just so that people know, um, uh, there are two Daniels that have check in permit privileges on them. The SQLite website, and uh, we're looking at Dan Shearer here as one of them. But don't confuse this Dan with um, Dan Kennedy, who's the longstanding Dan. So sometimes we see you know, Dan said this, and we're wondering which Dan is it? <laughs> so but there, there are a few people who have commit, commit privileges on the SQLite to repository, and Dan Shearer, the guy here in the uh, 1970s, um, Disco outfit is one of them. <laughs> so I uh, know I don't have any questions. Uh, I think I said something in the chat, didn't I? About um, uh, it's very difficult to to plug in alternative storage engines because each storage engine wants tweaks to the query planner, and um, that's hard to uh, that can be hard to do, um, and. Um, I mean, this is this is an ongoing struggle with Combi too. Uh, they they seem to solve that problem just by throwing an enormous amount of very powerful hardware at it, <laughs> which they can do. Um, but uh, 
I mean, some certain certain features like the uh, stat four system, which is not turned by default, is was written specifically for Kong Duty too. And there are other there are other bits and pieces of code that you may have come across, Dan, uh, where uh, there are parts of the B-Tree system that are that they appear to be no ops. There are interfaces to the B-Tree system that appear to be no ops. And they are no ops in the default distribution, but they are used by CommDB2. So things can get really complicated very fast. It's not as simple as just plugging in a, a key value store. Not, not at all. And especially when you start going to a column store. Uh, you know, there, was, there was originally SQLite 4. We worked, Dan, the other day, and worked on SQLite 4 for a couple of years. I mean, he put a enormous amount of work in that, and then he had a new storage engine which was based on uh, uh, log structure converge. I'm sorry. Um, I just unmuted myself. Can you adjust the mic setting? All right. So, is it does it be higher, lower? Is it breaking oh, up? It's lower. Better. It's clipping. Okay. Hold on. Is this better? Testing yes. one two. Okay. So, uh, Dan Dan Kennedy worked and he built a brilliant log structured merge engine that was faster than. Uh, um, uh, uh, rocks DB and all these others. But what we found is that uh, for the typical use cases of SQLite, uh, log structured merge does not work well at all. It works really well for the types for some types of workloads. And you know, like I, like I was watching um, uh, the the uh, flyware people talking about some of their workloads and and log structured merge would be brilliant for that. For that situation, but they're but they're kind of obscure workloads. The kinds of things that, that happen on iPhones and Android phones and and in your operating system are very different. And log structured merge does not work well in those situations. We found out. So, uh, but that was a completely different query planner, and we eventually had to abandon kind of a whole effort there because that just wasn't wasn't giving the results that we needed. And we, we we learned some lessons from SQLite four, which we folded back into the main tree, but. Uh, our, our decision was that log structure merge was not a good fit for what for the problems, the typical kinds of problems that um, SQLite wants to solve. So anyway, but going to log structure merge or going to a column store is a really big change, especially going to a column store. That just completely changes the uh, the query planner algorithms and and the algorithms that the query planner would pick for a a row store are very different from the ones it would pick for a column store. So. That, that, that's problematic. It's difficult to compare a column store and a row store for that reason because you're going to be cho choosing very different algorithms uh, between the two of them. Does that make any sense? Is there anyone there? I think I might be dead. I'm not getting any responses from anybody. Hello. Oh, oh I there we go. <laughs> uh, so, Richard, um, as you can see, the two backends we've added in, first of all, are, are key value stores, um, not too dissimilar, clearly, to what SQLite has already. Yeah. And there's two or three others to add, including the ComDB. Uh, do you think it's useful, um, this approach of trying to get benchmarking across broadly similar key value stores? Um, sure, I think that'd be a useful thing to do. I. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a useful thing. And and you're not the first to attempt this. I've, I've heard from a lot of other people that that like, they like to strip out the uh, B-Tree layer from SQLite and plug in their own. And these have been research projects that I've heard of. And uh, Yeah, um, so this is the thing. Um, GitHub has 78 million repositories. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a feature. It's a really, really bad bug. <laughs> um, what, uh, what I'd very much like to do is, if possible, harness a lot of that brilliance to say, well, where are the bottlenecks? So something that we're looking at is measuring VDB ops per different uh, backend, um, because that's kind of interesting for for a different kind of queries. Uh, how long does it take um, in terms of the backend getting in the way and shuffling data on and off disk and so forth uh, to to execute particular operations. Um, and that doesn't appear to be linear by any means. Um, 
it's kind of like an empirical approach because I don't really understand what's happening inside all of these key value stores and certainly not their relationship to much higher up the SQLite stack. But if we can measure how long it takes to execute particular queries, yes, but then particular VDD ops, uh, then I think um, there could be some very useful conclusions to draw. Exactly what I do. Well, there's um you can compile SQLite in a particular mode that where it every time it runs a VDB op it, it spits out some stuff to a log file. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a tickle script in the source tree which you can run over that log file and it details exactly how long you spent how many times each op code was called and, and what the total what the average and total time for each op code is. You might want to take a look at that. I can tell you exactly which op codes take the most time. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but will that be consistent across different KV stores? You know, I, I, I'm. I, that's not clear. I, I think it'll be largely consistent, but it, this would be a good thing to try. Um, so, for example, LMDB does not have write-ahead log files because it outsources that to the operating system. Cue the old debate. Right. Um, would that not change the profile of VDB ops to do with um, with write ahead logs? Perhaps. No, because the write ahead logs are that's not really getting in the way of the uh, VDB ops so much. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe a little bit, but but really the 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 write ahead log really comes into play when you do the transaction commit, and that happens after the the VDB program stops. So it reaches the halt instruction and that's when the commit occurs. And so that doesn't really come into the timings of um, well we're also also trying to instrument the pager. So right. That's where we get into the meat of that I would have thought. Yes. Um, so yeah, let's try. I didn't mean we had. Stomach, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's, I appreciate you working on this. I mean, you could really get some really interesting insights. And what we found in the past is that by adding, adding new ways of measuring performance, we found substantial new optimization opportunities. Okay, so and, here, and, is, and, here is a plug, um, Mr. Hip. <laughs> um, I posted. Just, I posted I'm just going to turn on a light. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. Look, clearly the man is running scared. Um. <laughs> now maybe you can see me better. Yes, we can. And, and actually, I accused you of running scared, but you're not really. Um, <laughs> listen, um, so it seems to me. Um, the debug code, as you point out yourself, um, if you switch on SQLite debug, then that is an immense overhead, uh, not just in assert statements, as you pointed out, but also there's quite a lot of non-assert statements that goes in there. You reckon it runs a third slower? Um, now, Maybe I, more. It depends on the workload. Yeah. So I posted to the forum, I posted uh, a, a, a macro architecture that I th think might solve that in a backwardsly compatible way to allow us to switch on just the debugging that matters. Um, would you be willing you to know be... some version of that? Because I think a lot of people might find not it nice if it doesn't take, you know, a third longer and potentially uh, cause Heisen timing issues. All right. Ask that question again, because I was tr trying to adjust my audio. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I posted a thing to the forum about uh, possibly a, um, adding a backwardsly compatible debug structure infrastructure so that we can switch selectively debug um, just the module that we're trying to debug. Oh, right, right. Um, well, we have kind of bits and we, yeah, well, we have kind of bits and pieces there of that already. You've got the, two, but they explicitly say not supported. <laughs> Yeah, well, anything you put in is going to be not supported because we're going to, want to be able to change it. And when I say supported, that means that I promise to keep it the same for the next 30 years. And I yes. don't want to do that with your debug statements. So, so whatever you put in would also be not supported. Uh, indeed. 
but also if it's perfectly backwards compatible, which I believe it probably is, although you know the assembled geniuses haven't commented yet, um, I suspect it might make a lot of people's life easier and possibly uh, your own CPU cycle uh, costs go down rather a lot every release. That's all. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so you consider I it, right? I was consider, yeah. We we spend a lot of time trying to optimize the code, and if you've seen the graphs, we 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 achieved a lot of optimization back in the mid twenty tens. But well, we've kind of we've kind of wrung all the blood we can out of that turnip, and um, uh, it's I'm looking for new ideas. So if you have a better idea of how to how to make it go faster, that'd be great. I've found the ideal idea, which is to start doing benchmarking, realize it's going to be way too hard. So I store all the results in a SQLite database. And then I come to a conference where all these people present like R and Tickle. So I'm looking for all of these R experts to say, aha, a SQLite database with huge numbers of numbers. I can graph the hell out of that. That's what I really want. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'd like to divert um, your attention to one of the questions in the Q and A, um, and then any last remarks. Um, if anyone had any other questions, um, I would definitely want to give everyone the opportunity to do so. Um, I guess Dan, can you see the Q and A? Aha! Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Okay. Now um, I poked a few people, and the person responsible for the hashtag hashtag uh, fossil. Um, IRC on uh, IRC chat room on Freenode um, burst into life. He posted something and it's become quite active over the last week or so. And I mention that because this very discussion about um, Web SQL and, and uh, IndexedDB came up just a couple of, uh, excuse me, a couple of hours ago. Um, now, um, the general thrust of that, I'm just pulling up a IRC right now. Um, oh, actually, there's a bit of scroll back here. Okay, so without, no, I can't find it quickly enough. Basically, I don't know anything much about IndexedDB. Um, and as Richard has highlighted here, if we're trying to add a backend store that doesn't more or less look like a key value store that's a B tree, then um, it isn't going to be looking, uh, it isn't going to be a, a natural fit for uh, some kind of a close cousin to SQLite. So I get that there's a lot of pain around IndexedDB. Um, I don't know how it's going to, um, how it's going to compare. If you know about IndexedDB, come and talk to me. We'll see if we can find that mapping. Um, so don't know, but please, welcome. Uh, David Simmons, I have your name. 